Food production is one of the most important services provided by agro-ecosystems worldwide, yet intensive food production systems are not sustainable. They have so many negative impacts on biodiversity, on human health, on ecosystem functioning, um, and that's why I'm here today to, to give you a very simple message. We really need to create more sustainable, biodiverse, and resilient agro-ecosystems in the face of climate change. And we need to do it now uh, because we don't have a choice. The um, adoption of chemical intensive production systems in the 1900s has started a um, negative trend, a drastic declines in biodiversity, in human health and well-being, in soil health quality, um, and in the ability to deliver different ecosystem services. Um, just to give you a few numbers, 33% of Earth's soils are now degraded, and more than 90% could become degraded by 2050. Um, since the onset of agriculture, um, 8,000 years ago, it has been estimated that we lost 140 billion tons of carbon through cultivation. The global food production system is the key driver of biodiversity loss, and agriculture alone is threatening 86% of species at risk of extinction. And also, 22% of global uh, greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture, forestry, and land use change. There is another very good reason why we need to promote healthy soils, and it is associated with the concept of One Health, which is the recognition that uh, human health and well-being is highly interconnected with environmental health. So this picture simply tells us that we are actually what we eat. Uh, we are um, what our microbiome is, and the quality of this food is um, highly dependent on the biodiversity of the soil microbiome. So if you look at this picture, the right side, the blue side, the good health side, it suggests that healthy soils um, host a more biodiverse microbiome which contributes to provide plants with key nutrients, vitamins, and um, organic compounds which are beneficial to human health. Um, so the question is, how are we going to create more sustainable, biodiverse, and resilient agroecosystems in the face of climate change? It's very simple. We need to work with nature rather than against it. And regenerative organic agriculture provides the tools and the guidelines to do it. I borrowed this picture, original painting, from Kiss the Ground, which is a non-profit organization promoting regenerative organic agriculture. Kiss the Ground is also a movie which was released three years ago, and I advise you to watch it if you didn't yet. Likewise, the new Common Ground movie, which is being released now in the United States, um, both films are and will be influential in supporting the regenerative organic movement. Well, looking at this picture is easy to decide actually where you want to be. You want to be on the right side within this um, human managed landscape where crops are grown for food, fibers, organic active ingredients, following the principles of regenerative organic agriculture. What are these principles? Uh, minimum tillage, crop rotations, the use of cover crops, which help to cover the soil all year round, um, the use of organic fertilizers, like compost and manure, um, the avoidance of chemicals, no pesticides, herbicides, and synthetic fertilizers, and actually the promotion of crop diversity, uh, for instance, by growing crops near to each other in, in strip cropping. You need to remember that the principles of regenerative organic agriculture are not new. Um, they have been known for a long time, but the problem 
is that we haven't applied them enough, especially since the adoption of 100 years ago of um, chemical intensive production systems. The problem is that intensive agriculture tends to make soils addicted to chemicals. It creates a vicious cycle whereby more chemical inputs are needed year after year to keep the soil performing less and less. The end result is uh, soil ecosystems which are characterized by low biological activity and are prone to erosion. You see, soils are complex ecosystems. One gram only of healthy soil could contain up to 10 million microorganisms, more people than there are on planet Earth. And we still need to know which does what. So if you keep applying herbicides and pesticides through time, it's very likely that you're going to kill beneficial microorganisms um, which are good for the functioning of the soil ecosystem. It's like removing key players from a football team uh, which will start performing worse and worse. So what do we do? To stop these and to reverse this uh, soil degradation trend, we need to build up synergies among farmers, non-profit organizations, and different types of industries, agri-food, um, cosmetics, pharmaceutical, textile, which can source food, fibers, and active organic ingredients from regenerative, organically farmed soils. And I'm also here today uh, to give you this good example uh, of these synergies. The European Regenerative Organic Center, uh, or EROC, based in Parma, Italy, is a partnership between a private cosmetics industry, the Davinus Group, based in Italy, and the um, non-profit agricultural organization, the Rodale Institute, in the United States. It is an odd combination, you know, cosmetics, regenerative organic agriculture, and the key link is soil health. Healthy soils produce healthy plants, which provide key active organic ingredients for the formulation of cosmetics products. The EROC partnership is important for at least three different reasons. It contributes to interdisciplinary research. We are missing data. We want to quantify and measure the potential benefits of regenerative organic agriculture on soil health and on plant nutritional quality. And we're doing this in Parma. Um, we develop um, educational programs for farmers, schools, um, the public, to disseminate the principles of regenerative organic agriculture. And importantly, we aim to support farmers to make the agroecological transition, to move from conventional to organic to regenerative organic agriculture. The agroecological transition, it is a key challenge because it requires farmers um, to change their mindset. And they are reasonably worried from a financial point of view because they end up to grow their crops without the protection of chemical input, protection of chemical inputs. And that's why we need uh, public and private investments in this critical transition stage, and we, we need to do that um, step by step. The way we are doing it with EROC is by creating a network of regenerative organic farmers which can provide organic active ingredients to the cosmetics industry. Uh, note that the biomass provided by farmers is often in the form of residues and wastes from primary production. For instance, in this case is from grape pomace, from which active organic ingredients are then extracted. But this is the key point. The Davinus Group and the cosmetics industry in general can create or contribute by creating an additional market. 
to diversify um, the portfolio of these farmers, which can continue producing biomass for the agri-food industry or fibers for the textile industry. And I really believe that by creating these synergies among um, farmers and different types of industries could be a game changer. It could be a new business model, which will have multiple benefits. It will benefit farmers, which can get access to different um, parallel markets where to sell their products and commodities. It will benefit agricultural soils because they will be managed according to the principles of regenerative organic agriculture. It will benefit biodiversity, not only within the soil, but also at the landscape level. It will benefit private industries, which will be selling higher quality products. And it will benefit us and end consumers of um, healthy products. Whether this is, um, there is um, food, fibers, or active organic ingredients. And um, from this point of view, I think EROC sets a very good example to follow. And there are many other wonderful initiatives at the moment from other private companies. I think, though, that to have a larger positive impact on society and the environment, synergies among uh, farmers, non-profit organizations, and private industries might not be enough. Um, we need new legislation, new regulations from our governments to allow small and medium-sized farmers to start and implement the agroecological transition. And finally, I do really believe that a combination of regenerative organic practices, the use of new technology, drones, remote sensing, uh, sensors, and more attention paid to reduce food waste, which is 30% at the moment, um, all together will contribute to enhance um, food security across um, agro-ecosystems worldwide. Thank you.